Hi, this is Vanessa with the latest news from ASEAN and its surrounding regions, and here they are. Singapore ready to assist Timor-Leste to join ASEAN in the future. Singapore had shown its willingness to support Timor-Leste to share experience they have for Timor-Leste to be fully integrated as the ASEAN member. Hu Yi Chen, the Singaporean ambassador to Timor-Leste, look forward to Timor-Leste's effort to comply with the existing roadmap in order to Timor-Leste become the permanent member of the ASEAN organization in the future. The Prime Minister uh, and I had a very fruitful discussion. Uh, this is the first visit that I'm making to Timor-Leste, having been appointed the ambassador from my country, the Republic of Singapore, to the Democratic Republic of Timor-Leste. Uh, yesterday I had a very fruitful meeting and uh, with a number of uh, business leaders, uh, government officials, as well as members of the NGO, the international community. Uh, as well, I had the opportunity to meet with um, Singaporeans uh, living and working here in Timor-Leste and around the Dili area. Uh, so the, today, uh, the meeting that uh, the Prime Minister and I discussed on a number of issues uh, related to the past contribution of Singapore uh, from the days of pre-independence uh, since uh, uh, the country's uh, independence with Singapore have sent some 1,000 uh, uh, Singapore Armed Forces officials, uh, personnel as well as uh, uh, soldiers and officers as far as from our Singapore Police Force uh, in helping to participate in the UN peacekeeping uh, over the years and uh, over the last 20 years or so, the Singapore government have also provided a training program uh, to the officers of the Timor-Leste government, uh, numbering at about 800, designed to help uh, Timor's uh, government officials to prepare for uh, its ascension into the ASEAN as a member. Uh, as we all know, uh, a particular roadmap is now being developed by ASEAN nation states uh, to design the criteria, the timeline, and the roadmap leading to Timor-Leste's ascension to ASEAN. And that particular roadmap is being worked on, and we look forward uh, to helping uh, Timor-Leste to gain the necessary experience, expertise, and know-how uh, to participate, to contribute, and in time to come to become a full-fledged member of ASEAN so that collectively the family members of ASEAN can move forward in a concerted Cheng added that he had meeting with the head of Timorese government and institutions, entrepreneurs, leaders, NGO members, the international community, which is for him it's an opportunity once he arrived in Timor-Leste. Cheng also explained that during 20 years, the Singaporean government had helped train Timor-Leste civil servants and Singapore also assisted Timor-Leste in creating a program to support Timor-Leste's government official, especially preparing the tasks for Timor-Leste accession to ASEAN. Earlier this year, Timorese Minister of Foreign Affairs and Cooperation, Adal Ziza de Arujo Magno, informed that Timor-Leste needs to adopt more than 300 agreements in order to become ASEAN permanent member in the future. The ASEAN's organization was established on August 8, 1967 in Bangkok, Thailand by five nations which was Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore and Thailand. The current member states of the ASEAN are Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand and Vietnam. Germany ambassador meets with Timorese president to discuss Timor-Leste accession to ASEAN. In Aleppo, the Germany ambassador explained the aim of the meeting with the President of the Republic, Jose Ramos Orta, is to strengthen the relationship between Timor-Leste and Germany for a better future. I got a lot of very interesting new information about where the situation stands, and I wish uh, Timor-Leste the best of success for this endeavor. I think uh, in order to, that this is basically a matter for ASEAN to decide. But I think everything that improves capacities, education, in this country will be very important. And also connectivity, air traffic, internet. But uh, this is between ASEAN and Timor-Leste. And uh, we support the wish to exceed, but we don't uh, really say anything about the details. She also said, German ready to support Timor-Leste to join ASEAN, but they don't really want it to say about the details. In Aleppo stresses that, they also discuss about education capacity building on the same meeting. Timor's government suspends its candidature to United Nations Human Rights Council. 
Earlier February 2023, Timor-Leste's Council of Ministers approved a proposed draft of government resolution presented by the Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs and Cooperation, Julian da Silva, to postpone the membership of Timor-Leste to United Nations Human Rights Council for 2024-2026 period. Head of Council Minister Fidelis Leite Magalhães said the reason why Timor-Leste suspends its candidacy for the United Nations Human Rights Council because now Timor-Leste is in, in the positive phase to become the ASEAN member. Magalhães added that, according to the ASEAN rule, that only one of the ASEAN member states can submit candidacy to the United Nations Human Rights Council. Timor-Leste decided to suspend and recandidate in 2027 until 2029 because we are in the advanced stage and moving forward towards our ASEAN candidacy. And based on ASEAN practice, only one member state can run for such candidacy. In the same way, Indonesia, which actually holding the position of the ASEAN's rotating chair, also moved forward with its candidacy. As for that reason, Timor-Leste decides to suspend its candidacy for the moment and postpone it to 2027 to 2028, as it now Indonesian taking step to its candidacy 2024 and 2026 period. Earlier this year, Timorese Minister of Foreign Affairs and Cooperation declared Timor-Leste proposed its diplomat in Geneva to the candidacy of the United Nations Human Rights Council 2024-2026 period. Hungarian ambassador meets with Timorese head of Chamber of Commerce and Industry to establish cooperation between Timor-Leste and Hungary. The Hungarian ambassador to Timor-Leste met with the Timorese head of the Chamber of Commerce and Industry to establish great economic cooperation between the two countries. Lila Karsi, the Hungarian ambassador, said there is a possibility to send Timorese to work in Hungary. Well, first of all, it is a great honor to be here and uh, thank you for Mr. President to receiving me and uh, to give some insight about how is the situation right now in Timor-Leste for the private sector. And um, as I'm just a very newly appointed ambassador, for me it's uh, one of the key focus to, uh, to investigate how the Hungarian companies and, uh, uh, can do what we can do and how we can uh, do right now. Uh, and as we discussed with the capacity building for the outsourced labor uh, sending from Timor-Leste to Hungary, and uh, water treatment are also key areas, as well as the agricultural sector. I see we can have uh, a lot to work on together. So this um, gives me some objective what to do, and uh, as we are celebrating the 20th uh, anniversary between the Hungarian and Timor-Leste relations, uh, I think this is now it's really time to start something and I really do hope that I can uh, come back uh, this year more often and also in the future I can visit more and uh, accordingly we can start uh, to check what could be the time frame uh, to start working. As uh, I discussed with Mr. President and the representatives uh, of the Chamber of Commerce, we need to make a roadmap first and we need to see uh, all the uh, time frame for that. Um, the Vice President for Internal Affairs of CCITL thanked the Hungarian ambassador for her discussed various issues, especially on how to be able to create and establish great cooperation with private sectors. On behalf of the Chamber of Commerce and Industry of Timor-Leste, we thanked the ambassador who has made a courtesy visit to the president. We discussed several topics on how to work together in any sectors. Among entrepreneurs, we focused on how we can work together in the future. In agriculture, fisheries and livestock area, we have discussed on how to collaborate in intensive capacity building, so it may be necessary to continue the discussion. The ambassador had talked with the president on how to establish a consulate office in Timor-Leste. <laughs> The courtesy visit to the CCITL office was the initiative of the Hungarian ambassador in order to enhance the bilateral friendship between Timor-Leste and Hungary. Ambassadors from three different countries meet with Kaira Lechenone Guzman to discuss their support to Timor-Leste. Kairala Shanana Guzmaun, accompanied by CNRC Party General Secretary Francisco Calguadilai, welcomes three ambassadors, such as Singaporean Ambassador Robin Hu, Croatian Ambassador Nebojta Kaurovic, and Spanish Ambassador Francisco Aguilera. After the meeting, Kairala Shanana Guzmaun said that the meeting speaks about the support that will offer to Timor-Leste in the future by the three countries. 
We discussed the future of the relationship between Spain and Timor-Leste. There are many things. We cannot discuss it now. We still have time since the ambassador will return. We talk a lot in order for us to understand and get to know each other. In 1991, when there was the Santa Cruz massacre, they also started their independence war, where it seems that something that linked us between Timor-Leste and Croatia. Shannon was escorted by his bodyguard to return home after the meeting. Bulgarian ambassador meets with Timorese head of Chamber of Commerce and Industry and discuss the economic cooperation between both countries. Bulgarian ambassador to Timor-Leste, Peter Andonov, had a meeting with the head of Timor-Leste's Chamber of Commerce and Industry, CCITL, Jorge Manuel de Arroyo Serrano, to talk about the cooperation between Bulgaria and Timor-Leste in economic area, especially in the exports and import sector. Andonov said the discussion on the meeting is about the exports of Timor-Leste's product, such as coffee and vanilla, to Bulgaria, as well as the imports of soft rose oil and other products from Bulgaria to Timor-Leste. Uh, I'm uh, very thankful to... Uh the president and vice president of uh, the Chamber of Commerce and Industry of Timor-Leste for receiving me uh, today. Uh, I consider it as a very important meeting because on 21st of January this year we marked 20th anniversary of diplomatic relations between uh, Bulgaria and uh, Timor-Leste. And uh, in this regard, I think that uh, probably the most important thing is uh, to uh, start uh, very active cooperation in the field of bilateral trade and uh, investment and also in the field of uh, tourism and uh, innovation. So that was in the core of uh, our uh, discussion. Uh, today uh, we would like to find uh, what kind of uh, unique uh, products that you have here in Timor-Leste could be uh, exported to Bulgaria and also what kind of products you need to be imported from Bulgaria here in um, uh, Timor-Leste. Uh, we would like also in Bulgaria to explore uh, the opportunities for investment of Bulgarian private companies into different sectors of uh, Timor-Leste economy, for example uh, agriculture uh, or uh, fisheries. Uh, Bulgaria also is also IT powerhouse in southeastern Europe. We are uh, we have very good talent in the field of uh, uh, IT sector, computer software uh, development, and uh, digital economy. Meanwhile, the vice president of CCITL also appreciates the meeting as it can improve more cooperation between both countries. Senor Presidente, CCITL, CMOVIS. President of the Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Timor-Leste, welcomes the visit of Bulgarian ambassador with the aims that to discuss with Timor-Leste's Chamber of Commerce and Industry how to develop cooperation between private sectors of both countries, Bulgaria and Timor-Leste, to have an extended products. For example, they are experts in areas such as IT software, agriculture, livestock and also fisheries. They are also interested to include in the packet of Timorese to visit Bulgaria. We also talked with the ambassador after 20 years Timor-Leste and Bulgaria have bilateral relationship and the anniversary of that was held a few days ago. Now it's time to both countries' private sector to start developing cooperation. They are very interested in our coffee and vanilla as well as the tourism, agriculture, fisheries and also livestock. The courtesy visit was initiated by the Bulgarian embassy and there is an expectation from the meeting that it can build the friendship between Timor-Leste and Bulgaria, especially in the economy, agriculture, tourism and other sectors. Myanmar military junta extends emergency situation for six months. The acting president said at a leadership meeting broadcast on state TV, Myanmar's junta extended the country's state of emergency by another six months. The MRTV broadcast showed junta leader General Ming Oleng in a meeting with the army-backed National Defense and Security Council also said multi-party elections must be held as the people desire. The Southeast Asian country's top generals led a putsch in February 2021 after five years of tense power sharing under a quasi-civilian political system created by the military. Protesters and exiled civilian leaders vowed to end what they called the army's illegal power grab. 
In major cities across Myanmar, streets emptied out as people stayed at home, silent protests, while hundreds of democracy supporters attended rallies in Thailand and the Philippines. United Nations said already two years, but Myanmar coup still committed crimes against humanity. Thank you very much. And um... Two years after Myanmar's February 1, 2021 military coup, which unseated Nobel laureate Aung San Suu Kyi's elected government, it has left a trail of appended lives in its wake. The United Nations Special Envoy at the United Nations said it was the second anniversary of the failure as an international community to effectively address this crisis. According to the United Nations, some 1.2 million people have been displaced and over 70,000 have left the country, which has accused the military of war crimes and crimes against humanity. Impact over the last two years in the lives of people, Myanmar people, as a result of the junta's systematic crimes against humanity and war crimes uh, has been extremely, extremely significant. Uh, of two years ago, 1.1 million people have been displaced, uh, making the total number of displaced now in Myanmar 1.5 um, million people. Half of Myanmar's school children, more than 4 million, um, uh, do not have access to uh, formal education, and they have not had access to education over the last uh, two years. Nearly half of Myanmar's population is now living below the poverty line. 17.6 million people are expected to be in need of humanitarian aid in 2023. 17.6 million people. That is in contrast to a total of 1 million people who were in need of humanitarian aid before the coup. So from 1 million before the coup to 17.6 million now, and that is nearly a third of the entire population. He adds, Junta Military Myanmar does not have legitimacy of Myanmar people. There's three things that the junta needs to sustain itself. It needs money, it needs weapons, and it needs uh, legitimacy. Um, the, the junta does, does not have legitimacy in the, in, in the eyes of the people of Myanmar. United States-based conflict monitoring group ACLIT said about 19,000 people died last year as a crackdown on protest against the military. Protesters demonstrate in Bangkok to mark the second anniversary of the military coup. Thousands of Myanmar protesters gathered in front of the embassy at the United Nations office in Bangkok to mark the second anniversary of the 2021 military coup in Myanmar. We have been beaten by a dog, military junta, for two years. I want everyone in the world to know Myanmar people who reside in Thailand have not given up. We will fight until we win. Protesters raised three fingers to symbolize liberty, equality and fraternity and showed photos of ousted Myanmar leader Aung San Suu Kyi. A rally was also held in front of the United Nations office. According to the United Nations, some 1.2 million people have been displaced and over 70,000 have left the country, which has accused the military of war crimes and crimes against humanity. Chinese travelers boosting recovery of global aviation industry. Chinese easing of COVID-19 travel restriction is expected to inject new momentum into the global aviation industry as Chinese travelers take to the skies again. For international travel. Now many Chinese passengers are traveling abroad for the first time in three years after China announced that it was easing restrictions for international travelers from January 8. Travelers from China are critical for tourism and leisure industry in Singapore, with air travel between two countries among the largest contributors to passengers' volumes at Changi Airport. Most Chinese passengers flying into Singapore for now are here for family visits, with the resumption of leisure tourism expected to be more gradual. This might benefit Chinese airlines, which have kept their aircraft in service on domestic routes. Thank you, everyone. That's the whole news for today's program. Enjoy your weekdays ahead. Stay safe and stay healthy.